Hello, symbol lovers, and welcome to another edition of Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And this time around, I'm going to introduce you to a new key for understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And that key is look for the rule and the exception. We're going to take a closer look at the temptation of St. Anthony by Hieronymus Bosch, and we're going to look at the most boring part of the painting. But by looking at this relatively simple set of symbols, we'll be able to understand a lot of more complicated symbols later on. So what we're going to look at are those boats in the water and that beacon on the hill. And uh, we are going to look for the rule and the exception. So first we need to know about the exciting sea voyage that is attached to the story of St. Anthony of Padua. Anthony was born in Portugal to rich, noble parents. He was given a fine education, and he was ordained as a priest by the time he was 19. He had much religious zeal, and after eight missionaries were beheaded in Morocco, he volunteered to join the next group of missionaries. But as soon as he got to Morocco, he fell terribly sick and was put on a boat heading home. However, a storm came up, blew him off course to Sicily, and then he went on to recuperate in the south of France, <laughs> northern Italy, and there he met St. Francis of Assisi and uh, he became St. Francis' right-hand man, and uh, history was made after that. Uh, so this famous voyage where, and it's said, especially in the religious biographies, that this was the hand of God uh, leading Anthony to his destiny as the servant of St. Francis of Assisi. And so that's what this is a picture of, that voyage from Africa. Now we can break down the symbols using our keys for understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And uh, we'll do follow the money real quick. Uh, the money in this case is that ship with full sails uh, simply because it isn't sinking. It's going to make it. Uh, so money isn't always money. Sometimes it's power and sometimes, as in this case, it's life. The real deal behind it is who is benefiting. And in this case, that's the ship carrying dear old St. Anthony of Padua. And so he is benefiting. So it's exactly what it looks like. What does it look like? It looks like three ships in an ocean. Two are sinking. One is heading safely towards that beacon on the hill. And we'll understand the beacon on the hill real quick by reading the Bible. Jesus said, I am a light to the world. You are a light to the world. Whenever you see a small light in a Bosch painting, especially one that seems to be there for no apparent reason, the light is an indicator of Jesus. And so the ship at full sail is being guided by the light of Jesus. But remember, Jesus also said that his followers would be lights. So that light on the hill could be St. Francis, or it even could be Holy Spirit guiding Anthony of Padua to St. Francis. And St. Francis would be reflecting the light of the teachings of Jesus. Uh, so you get the general idea. And also notice if those two ships weren't sinking in the water, you might not even connect the boat at full sail with the beacon. But it's because they've come to bad ends. That's the rule in this bit of water, that ships can come to very bad ends. But the exception to the rule is a ship that is guided by the light. So this bit of the painting commemorates the 
miraculous voyage of St. Anthony when he left Africa and was guided by God's Spirit to St. Francis of Assisi. And next we'll do There Is No Such Thing as Magic. And um, is there any magic in our story about St. Anthony? Why, yes, there is. That magical storm that blew him so far off course that he couldn't get back to Portugal that he had to live, move to the south of France. Now it could be that God's Holy Spirit came over St. Anthony and made him ill so he couldn't complete his missionary journey. And it could be that God caused a storm at sea so ferocious that it blew him completely off course and eventually into the arms of St. Francis of Assisi. Or it could be that this sheltered young man, once he got on the ground in Africa, saw how horrific the conditions were. He had a nervous breakdown. They packed him off in a ship back to Portugal. And, or he took a ship to Sicily because he didn't want to go home in disgrace for having failed at his mission. And so he eventually ended up where he always wanted to be anywhere, which was in the company of the legendary St. Francis of Assisi. And you'll notice in the painting, Bosch hasn't painted a storm at sea, simply a, a boat being guided by a light. So we have three ships in the ocean, but two of them are sinking. So the rule is, this is a very dangerous stretch of water. Ships sink. And we have the exception that boat at full sail that's going to take that fortunate journey from one distant shore to another. And so uh, that's, what, that's what the symbols are saying, that this ship has, is overcoming, even though it's going through dangerous waters, it will overcome them because it is guided by the light on the hill. So the temptation of St. Anthony is filled with many little scenes from the life of the saint, and this is one of them. So the rule and the exception are storytelling devices, and these pictures are all telling stories. So now we'll go from the simple to the complex. That is the inner panels of the Garden of Earthly Delight. And we're going to look for the rule and the exception. The rule is shown by the two panels on the left. They're full of sunshine and health and blessings and fruit. And everywhere, especially in the center panel, you see people sharing fruit and being very generous with one another. And by their fruit, you will know them. The exception to the rule, of course, is that dark panel on the right, the so-called hellscape. But we see that, at least spiritually speaking, that is the exception, that Bosch feels humanity is basically good. It was good in the beginning. It will be good eventually, because that is the will of God. But as the right panel points out, for the moment, Things are just awful. And remember, the church in Bosch's day was burning witches, homosexuals, and heretics. They were doing it in the thousands, and they had done it for 500 years by the time Bosch painted this picture. So the dark side of life is the side <laughs> ruled by that dead tree. And the dead tree is Christianity. By their fruits, you will know them. Christianity had turned itself into a, this weird police state full of torture and crazy executions. Remember, this was the height of the Spanish Inquisition. And the church had even written a book instructing monks on how to torture. That's how dark things got. But Looking at the painting in general, we see Bosch is optimistic. It's three quarters sunshine and light, and just this one terrible strip of darkness. 
but even inside the central panel, we find the rule and the exception at play. The rule is people are pretty much sharing and being kind to one another. The exception is there is one incident of assault. Most commentators think that the couple hiding inside the fountain are up to no good, that this is actually an assault. But of course it isn't. Look at the woman's hand. She has a free hand. She could fight him off if she wanted. She simply doesn't want to. She is giving him a free hand. Also, she is accompanied by two chaperones. In either one she could call on to save her if she was in trouble, and that one chaperone who is turning his back is showing his disapproval of the act. The fact that they're sheltered away indicates that they are being discreet, not that they are doing anything wrong. So this is not an example of people not being nice to one another. This is not the exception to the rule. This is actually an extension of people being nice to one another, but simply not doing it fully in public. A little discretion is advised. If you want to find the exception to everyone is nice in paradise, you have to look at the swamp part of uh, the central panel. And here in the swamp, we see a clear assault, a clear bit of unniceness. Um, it's not that one. Uh, he's being perfectly nice and they're both being supported by a uh, mallard known for its uh, fidelity, integrity. The people in the bubble, uh, once again, uh, she has a free hand and she is touching him. He is touching her. He is touching her womb, actually. Uh, I believe he's proposing children, and she is listening. So that's not an assault either. Uh, what is an assault is this one up here, and the man is holding the woman. The woman doesn't have a free hand, and he is looking right at us. He's saying, do you understand what's going on here? And so what is going on there is he is assaulting the woman, and that is how he ended up in the swamp. So they're both there for educational purposes. She is an actress. He is an actor. He is acting out what, what one can do wrong in paradise to get one sent to the swamp. And he's looking at us saying, this is very important. Do you understand? The function of the rule and the exception is to sharpen, by contrast, the main idea behind the symbol. So here in the Garden of Earthly Delights, it's emphasizing how nice everyone is to each other by showing this exception to the rule. In the case of St. Anthony, the sinking ships emphasize how amazing it was that Anthony came through safely. It really wouldn't be much of a symbol without the sinking ships, would it? We're not finished with St. Anthony just yet, and you'll be glad to know that I now have a crack researcher on the job. And as soon as she knows something, she'll tell me, and I'll tell you, one of these times on Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. A special thanks to all my subscribers and I certainly hope my bitter fruit is keeping you satisfied. Thanks for watching.